so I mentioned that my conclusions before um, to some other folks, and uh, my conclusion with race is that we're all different, we're all the same. You know, we all bleed red, and we all breathe, and we need freedom, and uh, all seven of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we need all seven of them. All of us need all seven of them, food, water, clothing, um, a sense of belonging, self-esteem, and uh, all the way up to self-actualization. So all of us have the same wants and desires and dreams, very very similar, if not identical. Have our children grow up and have good lives for good lives for ourselves, good lives for our family. Uh, and we're different. We're also very different. We're a nation of immigrants. So you've got you know Chinese folks here, you've got Japanese folks here, you've got uh, Germans and English people and Swedish people, and you've got African folks, but you got South African folks, and you got West African folks, and then you got African Americans, and then you got Africans, um, which is different cultures, and you got, you know, even amongst each of these groups, there's different subgroups, and you know, like I said, you can discriminate against anything. So you know, there's also fat folks and obese people, um, um, and, and I guess pretty people. I guess you could discriminate against them if you're, you know, if you're or skinny people. So discrimination and identity. It just works in a very weird way, and I think you could study it overall. Like overall, the way I feel is that I've struggled, and my my struggle trumps my whiteness. Um, but I don't believe that I've had it as hard as black folks. Some black folks, at least. Some black folks have had it better than me, and some black folks have been in positions of authority, um, and, and you know, or were treated better than me in some situations. So, the um, it doesn't. I'm just saying that. We're all different. We're all different, and we should appreciate all of our differences. In fact, when I get to tell people all about my ancestry and who I am, like, I call myself German, but it's not literally German because there was not a Germany when my ancestors left. So I am literally, you know, I got five different things that I am. I'm Bavarian. I'm Prussian. I'm Bohemian, which is the Czech Republic. I'm Austrian, and I'm African. So Bavarian, which is the German-speaking peoples, it was uh, by Monsterberg, um, was you know one of like 31 different states or regions of German-speaking peoples, and then you had the Russian states or the Prussian state-speaking uh, German people, who is Otto von Bismarck, and he used the Prussian state in order to solidify all the Germans. So I guess the Prussian part of me, the Bills. Uh, there's a Bills in our ancestry, so the Bills were Prussians, and and so those are more Germans than any of the other Germans, since they were the culture that dominated and had won and beat all the other German-speaking states. So the, I got Prussian, which is, you know, I would say is closest to German, but also got Bavarian, which is a different type of German, and I got Bohemian, which is the Czech Republic, so it's not German at all. It's uh, the Bohemian Forest, which has it's been its own kingdom. It's the Czech Republic. It's got its own language. Um, and it was a Sudetenland. So it was when Hitler invaded and took over the Sudetenlands. And uh, uh, Chamberlain, um, you had a Chamberlain, you know, the, the prime minister of England, who says, oh, all is well. They can take, uh, you know, take over a far away country if they want to take over a far away country. It doesn't even matter to us. Why do we care what happens in a far away land? And it wasn't a far away land. It was adjacent to Germany. It was right next door. It was a, in the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic is not that far away. So I'm bohemian. And also, like, the word Bohemian, you had Bohemian Rhapsody, but also the Bohemians were like the hippies before the hippies. Walt Whitman was a Bohemian, and you had the Bohemian Grove, which is, I'm not sure what that is exactly. <laughs> um, but the Bohemians were like the, you know, the, the, the artists and the um, kind of the hipsters in Paris and the uh, free thinkers and the unique folks and unique individuals. So, the, so that's Bohemian, Bavarian, uh, Prussian. So basically, two out of the five things are German. Then uh, you know, Bohemian is totally different. And then Austrian, which used to be German speaking, but now it's like its own thing, right? So being an Austrian, and Austrian is like there's the country of Austria still exists. So that that has a, a meaning for me too. Austrian just sounds like it's a beautiful country. Austria just just Austria, you know, it just sounds beautiful. <laughs> and then African, and African. When I found out I was 11% African, I was I was excited. I was happy. In fact, it's like the best part of me. I feel like it actually you know gives me a direct connection to black folks. My you know my expressiveness and my flavor and swag. I think 
can be attributed to some of that can be attributed to African uh, culture. Uh, but I also had African ancestors, so you know I I didn't grow up knowing anything about them. I couldn't find who they were. I found out all about my German ancestors and uh, some of my Eastern Kentucky ancestors, but I couldn't find out where my African ancestors were. And neither of my parents were want to find out. Neither they're both embarrassed um, that they have black blood in them. They've been fighting over each other. And was, no, he has it. No, she has it. And uh, I remember my old man actually talking about they had Cherokee blood in them, and so it sounds to me like white racists would more uh, more likely accept Indian blood in them than uh, African blood. So like the Melungeons, the Melungeons in Eastern Kentucky, they were saying that they were Portuguese <laughs> when they were actually um, black and white. So they were a mixture of African and European cultures, but they had been saying that they were Portuguese in order to cover up their African heritage since the, our society has been very racist. It's been very racist for a very long time. So it's raining here in Louisville, but um, and it's 7-27-2012. So, yeah, racism. racism. Yeah, fuck racism. <laughs> racism is bullshit. Uh, I'm not sure if I, if I finished that point or not, but the... Uh, the, the only thing I want to say about this one, and I'm glad I'm actually filling it up, because I only had something very small. The book Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli, uh, Maniac McGee was awesome. It was a great book. It showed like Maniac McGee was running on the tracks, uh, right on the tracks, just like not falling off, uh, you know, left or the right. And you know, you come from the wrong side of the tracks, so the tracks usually that that does designate where, where the uh, black folks and white folks designation is. I know Maysville, there's definitely train tracks there's train tracks here but he was walking on the train tracks and he was he was just oblivious to color right he didn't see color he didn't see black or white so he was walking in the black neighborhood the uh white neighborhood and i think it's the exact opposite as um as louisville uh, the east end enders are the black folks and the west enders were the white folks so maniac mcgee had i'm quoting out of the book maniac mcgee had the inability to see black and white he observes to himself that East Enders are ginger snap, and light fudge, dark fudge, and acorn, and butter rum, and cinnamon, and burnt orange, but never licorice, which to him was real black, and that he himself has at least seven shades of color right on his own skin, and not one of them being what he would call white, except for his eyeballs, which weren't any whiter than the eyeballs of the kids in the East End. I know um, one gentleman who called his skin color mahogany. You know, he said, I'm mahogany. And I know another uh, uh, African-American person, which, I, you know, like, they can call themselves what they want. So, like, she uh, says that her skin was caramel. It's caramel, which is wonderful. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, uh, you know, black is good. Black is beautiful. Black is wonderful. But caramel makes her unique out of everybody. I think of caramel. You know, like I think of her skin color as being caramel when I think of her. When I think of caramel, I think so. I think it's, it's, it's more diverse. It's more interesting. Whereas my skin color, peach maybe orange. The guy who had said that his skin color is mahogany. He had says your skin color. I mean, this is orange, right? And that's not literally my color or my skin. It's not my skin or nor my hair. Um, and I don't know, I used to think it was strawberry blonde, but it seems like a, a light brownish, a light brown reddishness, strawberry blonde, it's not blonde, I mean, it's like a brown, it's like a darker color, I don't know, um, so, so I just feel like black and white, that's what we're saying, is black and white, and oh yeah, the mahogany guy said that my skin was pink, he's like, you're pink, and I was like, fuck you, <laughs> I'm not pink, my manhood couldn't accept that. No, no, actually, I, it's fine, actually. I mean, I think there is some pinkish to it, but like what he had said, that he saw seven shades of color right on his own skin. So there is a lot of shades of skin. I got freckles also. So, um, and I also heard that <laughs> just uh, some Malcolm X history um, uh, of how he had saw things, and I think there's some justification to this, is uh, uh, white people is, like, white skin pigmentation is a disease. It's not, it was an aberration of what it was supposed to be. So it was like the albinos. The albino crew went into the European caves and they created this own so this society and then they started building up, you know, more uh, 
I guess, of their immune system and whatnot. But just that, just that idea that there's caves in Europe. So the, we all come out of Africa. All humankind came out of Africa. That's been proven without a doubt. That's where we all came out of. So we're all African, you know, to some extent. We're all African people. We all come out of Africa. Uh, but when it comes to Europe, we, um, um, the, the being in the caves and being out of the sunlight and not needing, um, you know, not needing or not being outside all the time, I think that the skin color was adapted. And I think that maybe there was an albino crew that went up there. And I think that they stayed in caves and they just, uh, Malcolm X says they plotted how to take over the rest of the world since they were weaker than the other peoples. Um, you know, I don't know about that, but just the biological of why did, why do we look different? You know, like we all, you know, we all humans, but why do we look different? Why do some of us got darker skins? Why do we have light skin, um, you know, brothers and why do we have dark skin crackers? You know, so, um, why, why did that happen? Native Americans, Chinese people, I mean, we got, there's, uh, Asian people, we, we look different. We got a different look to us and I think... It's uh, it's a good conversation to have to figure out why that is, um, to figure out the truth. So ultimately, overall, when it comes to colors, white and black, nobody is literally white or black. Nobody in the world, even powder, had like some color to them, even albinos. Um, I heard like some African people being so black that they're purple. But even Don Cheadle, Don Cheadle is really black. He has Native American in him. So um, you know they're really dark. Africans out there, but black, like, I just feel like white, black, for the most part, it's wrong. White and black, y'all don't know your fucking colors. Y'all don't know what you're looking at. You're not saying what is is real, okay? You want to look at me and say I'm white. You want to look at, um, you know, Don Cheeto and say he's black. You don't know what your colors are, and y'all need to go back to fucking kindergarten, okay? You need to go back to kindergarten because you don't know your damn colors. Go back and learn your colors. You don't be t teaching your kids this prejudice. Dennis Leary says that prejudice is taught. You know what his kid hates? Naps. That's all his kid hates. Prejudice is taught. So, y'all want to keep on saying black, white, black, white? I think it's bullshit. I think we're in a different era now, and I think we need to be multicultural and experience lots of different cultures and religions and languages and tongues and societies. And um, Just like the Statue of Liberty says, give me your teeming shores yearning to be free. So, all your, you know, your refuse and all the... You know, any anybody, uh, any person that any country doesn't want should come to America, and that's the that's the promise of America. Uh, you get, yeah, we should have an immigration policy. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but I'm just saying that we're an immigrant nation, and we got lots of differences here, and we should not try to be um, just assimilating into this uh, white supremacist culture. I think we should maintain and uh, maintain our own roots, and then build about a more beautiful, equitable, cooperative, multicultural society. You know, so white and black, they need the right colors. Go back to kindergarten. And kindergarten was brought by the Germans, okay? So the Germans brought kindergarten. Every time you go to German, every time you go to kindergarten, you should thank the Germans. Every time you go to a university, the model for the university was came out of uh, Germany. So go back to kindergarten, learn your damn colors. White people. <laughs>